Protons have a quantum property called spin, which can have one of only two values. Normally, the two spin values are the same energy, so the protons are equally distributed between the two values. However, when an external magnetic field is applied by our primary magnet, the parallel spin has a lower energy than the anti-parallel spin. This means that slightly more protons are processing in the lower energy state than in the higher energy state. This is represented by the red arrows, which remind us that these are the small percentage of the dipoles that have fallen into the lower energy state. Together, they create a net magnetic vector along the z-axis. Let's focus on them for a moment. When a 90 degree excitation pulse is applied, it's difficult to describe what happens to the individual dipoles and the positions of their energy levels. So that's represented with a question mark. However, when the excitation is over, the dipoles drop back into their original energy levels. However, they are evenly distributed between the two energy levels and they're coherent within the XY plane, which means that they make an oscillating magnetic field in the XY plane. That's what we measure. But what happens with all of the gray dipoles? Doesn't the magnetic field affect them as well? It does, but after the 90 degree pulse is over, they still cancel each other out in both the Z direction and within the XY plane. So they don't contribute to the signal. This concept is important to understand how T1 weighting works. Let's watch another 90 degree pulse, but this time the T1 of the material is very, very long. T2 decay still occurs, but the T1 is so long that the material doesn't regain its longitudinal relaxation. If another 90 degree pulse happens, while there is little or no net magnetic vector along the z-axis, when the excitation is over, the dipoles that are still in the higher energy state are now coherent and are opposing those that were in the lower energy state. Just like with the gray dipoles shown earlier, the dipoles cancel each other out and there is no net vector. For there to be a measurable signal in the xy plane after a 90 degree pulse, there must be a z-axis component when the pulse begins. This is the principle behind T1 weighting as well as flare and stir sequences.